What is up? I want to thank you guys for watching. Today we are going to talk about editing your dental photographs. If you've been watching all the videos in this dental photography series so far, you know that we have covered a lot of ground. Talking about everything from camera basics, camera settings, and how to take photos of your patients. Now we need to discuss what to do with the photographs that you've taken. So I'm going to walk you through my editing process and I will also go a little slower than normal so you can see exactly what I am doing. So depending on whether you are a PC or a Mac user, you will have various options available for editing. When editing dental photographs, we are not really doctoring these photos up much. The majority of the editing involves changes to the exposure and cropping. As long as you have software that allows you to edit the exposure and crop, you should be fine. I personally use Adobe Lightroom, and currently Adobe Lightroom can be obtained for as little as $9.99 per month. Lightroom is compatible with PC and Mac computers. In some ways, Lightroom is way more advanced than I personally need for dental photographs, but it does handle raw images really well. As we've discussed in previous videos, you can shoot in JPEG or RAW file formats. I personally shoot in RAW format, and when shooting in RAW, the software you use to edit will have to be able to process these RAW images. If you plan to use a photo editing software other than Lightroom, I would encourage you to look up videos on how to do basic adjustments and export images using that software. If you'd like me to do a video on the software you plan to use and you think that would be helpful, let me know and I will consider that for a future video. Another reason I use Lightroom is because it offers me a very simple and efficient workflow. As soon as I plug my card reader into the computer, Lightroom brings up a window allowing me to select the photos I would like to import. Once the photographs I want to edit are selected, I click import and Lightroom takes me to the library screen. From here I can choose to develop and edit my photographs as I wish. I may have multiple photographs of the same shot and part of editing is finding the photo that works best. Once I have found the photo I like and I have done the necessary edits that we'll talk about shortly, I then use Lightroom uh, as rating system to rate the photo. I give all the photos I plan to keep a five star rating and do not rate the photos I plan to discard. When all the photos I plan to keep have been edited and rated, I then select the five star rated photos and export the photographs as JPEG images. Once the photographs are exported, I then use the photos to create a keynote or a PowerPoint presentation for my patient. Now that is an example of my workflow and it works well for me. The point is, is you need a good predictable workflow to make things easy for you. If your workflow is difficult, it will likely discourage you from taking photos because you dread the editing process. In my opinion, the workflow is just as important as the software you use to edit. All right, so I just talked about my personal workflow using Lightroom. Let's start to go through that workflow and let's edit some photographs. So here I have the photographs of our patient that we captured in the previous videos. Here you can see all the images that I captured. We're gonna go through these and edit the ones I would like to keep. As you know, I have different photograph series options for my patients, and in this specific scenario, I took photos for the full series option, which includes 24 images. So hopefully I have at least one photo of each shot in the series that will work. Now, just so you know, in preparation for recording this video, I went ahead and I rated all the photos that I would like to edit. The photos that we are editing are in their original form straight out of the camera. So although this is my workflow, I did cheat a little to make it easier for the recording. All right, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Lightroom. Now this is on my uh, MacBook Air laptop. Uh, I was gonna try to do this on my desktop, but unfortunately it's 
it's being a little weird with screen recording. So um, bear with me because <laughs> this is the first time I've edited on this computer. But what you see here is I have Lightroom open. You can see the main photo in the center of the screen. And at the very bottom, you can see all the photos that I have imported into Lightroom from this photo session. And so the ones that uh, are actually starred here, you can see the stars at the bottom of the photos. Those are the ones that I rated and I decided I want to keep those. Now, normally when I edit, I would go through each shot and I would pick the best one and I would edit that photo. And then after I'm satisfied with that photo and I like the edit, that's when I would apply the five star rating. And really you can apply a rating as simple as pushing a number uh, on the actual number uh, keyboard section. So like if I want to do a one star or if I want to make it um, a three star, you just hit one or three respectively. So it's real simple to do that. And I find that's just an easy way in Lightroom to uh, draw my attention to photos I want to keep and that way I can see the ones I don't want to use. So here we are at the first image. This is a full face kind of resting repose shot. Her lips are relaxed. And mostly if you get the composition right, you really don't have to crop this image very much. I don't think I need to crop this image when I'm looking at it right now. Probably the one thing I do like to do with these is I like to kind of level up the eyes so the eyes are on a straight horizontal line. So to do that, you will go to the crop section and I'll just go up to the top of this and I'm going to kind of drag this to where it looks like the eyes are fairly even. And that looks about good. And I'm gonna hit enter to lock that in. Lighting looks okay here. You can see though, I'll be honest, these photographs that I used for this course, uh, they're not perfect, okay? And that's probably a good thing that they're not perfect because then you can see how much editing allows you to kind of doctor these up a little bit. But when I say they're not perfect, like composition's pretty good. I'm happy with that. One of the things I noticed though after I imported these photos was the exposure. And you can tell just straight out of the gate, looking at this picture, look at her forehead right here, look below her eyes. You can tell that there's kind of like this shine coming off of her. So it may be just a tad bit overexposed in some areas. So if I want to, what I could do is I could go over here and I could grab the exposure bar and I could take that down a little bit. But one of the problems with doing that too is it makes the whole image exposure drop. So one of the things I like to do if I have specific highlights that are overexposed, the highlights bar here is really nice for that. So you can grab that and you can just drag that down a little. And you can see that that kind of uh, lightens up those areas. But unfortunately, you know, when you have overexposed areas or highlights, so to speak, those are really hard to recover from. If you are underexposed, it's really easy to bump the exposure up in your editing software, and it really doesn't degrade or take away from the quality of the image. If you're overexposed, it's really hard to recover from that, and it's really difficult to make that photo look good without influencing the quality. So there's only gonna be so much I can do here. And as another caveat, when I record these tutorials, I have a light right here, it's super bright, and it's actually shining on me, so it's making it kind of hard to see the screen, so I'm gonna to have to get in a little closer here. But that looks pretty good. All right, so once you're happy with the photo, we just move to the next one. And so we're gonna to go to the full face smile. And wow, you can really tell that this one is really kind of overexposed in some areas on the face. So let's take the highlights again, let's dial that back a little bit and just bring down those overexposed areas. And you can really do a lot to an image if you shoot in raw format. If you shoot in JPEG, you've already lost some of the data uh, basically in the photo from choosing that file format. Remember, raw is a like a negative. It contains all the data in the image. So it does allow you to manipulate this image a lot in editing and not lose quality. So you can really see how much I can dial that uh, overexposure back. Now granted, I don't love the background in this photo. Um, I'm gonna show you a different video where we talk about a different way to shoot these images. I personally uh, like to use a light box behind. 
the uh, subject. And you can still use black backgrounds, but this background was just kind of a generic black background we had in the clinic, so I just used it. But it's not great because you see the shadows around the head, you see the lines on the background, so it's kind of distracting background even though it's a dark black color. Regardless, we're gonna roll with this, and I would say that looks pretty good. Next, let's check the eye alignment again, and we're just gonna make sure that the eyes are fairly even here. You can, you can tell that the grid doesn't go directly over the eyes, so that's a little bit of a limitation with this, but that looks pretty good, and we're gonna lock that in. All right, moving on. Profile shot. And again, a little bit of overexposure. And here's something too we could we could talk about is let's say you shot with the wrong white balance. If you shot in the wrong white balance and you're shooting in raw format, you can actually adjust your white balance here and it's probably gonna make it look a lot better if you shot in the wrong one. Sometimes you can get away with that with raw images a lot easier than you can with JPEG. So um, I actually like the white balance on these photos, so we're gonna leave it at daylight. And as far as cropping this, you know, um, if you think back to your ortho days in dental school, you got, um, you know, a couple of different landmarks here, but Frankfurt Horizontal is, is typically what we look at being parallel to in this image. So that runs from right above the ear to orbitale here. And so if we can envision a line there, I could probably straighten this up just a smidge like that. And that looks pretty good. So that's really it for this image. I really don't have to do too much else. All right, let's move to the up close photos. Now, if you get the composition right on these photos that we're getting ready to go through, these extra oral up close images, you really don't have to crop these much. So I can tell already, again, highlights are maybe just a little bit too much. So we're gonna dial that back a little. And as far as cropping, I don't wanna crop, but I wanna make sure that the commissures are level. And it kind of looks like there's a slight cant here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just level up her lips a little bit. So something like that. All right, moving to the next one. Again, a little overexposed, so let's take the highlights down. This computer process is a little bit slower than my other computer I edit on, so it's a little bit of a delay here. Again, let's make sure the commissures are fairly even. And that actually looks pretty good, so we're gonna leave that as is. All right, we'll keep moving here. Now this shot, we usually like the, the lateral to be the center of the image. So after we do a little bit of adjusting here, the highlights, let's bring those down a little. As far as this is concerned, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna level this up a little bit. So I'm gonna level it like this. And you can see that the lateral is still in the center of the image. So that right there would be the edit I would do for this lateral uh, smile photo. And then we have, this is the left side, so we're gonna do the right side next. And really this is just the opposite, but the same stuff, we're gonna drop the highlights again. Man, I shot most of these really kind of overexposed. And then we're gonna level this up again with our crop tool, just like so. Lateral still in the center. Bam, that looks good. All right, our smile chin down photo. This one's really overexposed, so let's dial the highlights back. You know, it's, it's acceptable to play with exposure. It's not acceptable to manipulate colors and, you know, to clone things or to take away things from the photo. So really what we're doing here is pretty mild. I'm gonna have to use this one too a little bit. There we go. And I actually like the composition and the position of everything. So we're gonna keep that. Okay, next photo. 
This is our lateral profile smile, I guess you could say, smile profile. Let's dial this back. Cover some of those highlights. And that looks fine. You know, again, where do you want this in the image? I could probably crop in a little bit here if I wanted to. Kind of like that. And that would be good. All right. Next is our retracted photo. I love this photograph. I may end up doing a separate video on the benefits of this photograph. This tells you so much in regards to treatment planning, diagnosing, uh, but for sure, since this is a extra oral kind of full face photo, um, I do like for the eyes to be parallel. So exposure on this isn't too bad. I'm going to drop the highlights since that's kind of been the trend and let's check the parallel of the eyes. That looks pretty good. All right. And it's as simple as that. Okay, so now these are all the images that I either take with the patient standing or the patient sitting directly in front of me. And so now we're getting ready to move into the photographs where the patient's actually lying back. So you can refer back to those videos where we did intraoral photos uh, if you need to refresh your memory on patient positioning. But what you'll remember from those, if you don't already, is the patient's laying in a supine position I'm standing at the 12 o'clock position at the patient's head. So I'm shooting down. And so everything that I shoot from that position is actually upside down. So if we look at this image here, this is what you would see if you look through the camera from that position, that 12 o'clock position. But that's not what we want for the final photograph. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this. Um, a couple ways to do this. I can go up here to photo and I can rotate left or right until I get the proper orientation. Um, there's also shortcuts uh, as you can see here and that's what I typically use is I use the command and the little bracket symbol to, to quickly do that right here so I don't have to go up to a menu. Alright so first thing I can see here is composition's a little off. You can see even the midline's not in the center of the image so we're going to fix that but let's go ahead and adjust our highlights again, bring those down a little. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the crop tool. So I wanna crop in on this photo and I wanna center up those centrals to where they're right in the center of the image. And we have our incisal plane here and our posterior occlusal plane. I like for that to be in the center horizontally. So I don't want it real low like this. I don't want it real high. I want it to be just center with the centrals in the center vertically. So that looks pretty good, but I still got some of this up here. I could crop in a little bit more. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna crop in so much that you start to cut off any teeth in the back. This photo is not great, it's okay. Um, you know, the lip here could be brought back a little bit more. That's a little bit of a limitation with these metal retractors. If you're using plastic retractors, they tend to grab the whole lip and pull it out, whereas these metal ones only grab it in specific locations. So that's probably gonna be about as good as we can do here, but even this looks better than our starting photo. So that looks pretty good. Let me drop the highlights just a little bit more. All right, moving on to our intraoral teeth apart. We're gonna rotate this and we're going to drop the highlights again. I'm just gonna drop them all the way. All right, and then we're gonna crop the image. We're gonna crop in on this. Um, another thing, if you're using Lightroom, I'm just going in, I'm just grabbing the side of the crop tool. So it's, it's basically maintaining the aspect ratio meaning that as I draw it in, it's keeping proportionate width and height measurements. But you can also do custom ones as well. And so, you know, you got different ones here. Normally, I just stick with the original setting as shot or original here, okay? And I just grab it and bring it in like that. 
and that will keep all your photos the same width and height. If you start getting into custom sizes, then they may not fit certain things. So just keep that in mind when you're, you're cropping that you try to maintain a specific aspect ratio. Uh, four six is not a bad aspect ratio if you're gonna pick one. Otherwise, I just do what I'm doing here and I just grab the sides and, and bring them in. So again, center the centrals, occlusal plane, try to center that up. I could probably bring it in a little bit more here. Now how much you want to edit these is, is entirely up to you. Depends on what you're doing it for. If you're just doing it for your own practice and you're mainly going to be the one using these photos, you know, you have to draw a line in the sand of what's good enough, you know? How much do you want to do? All right, that looks good. Let's keep moving. Now we're getting into our teeth apart lateral shots, so let's make sure the maxillary teeth are on the top. Let's bring the highlights down. And I definitely want to crop this one. I want to bring it in some. The lateral is the center of the image here. Just like that. Bam. That one is good. All right, moving on to the opposite lateral shot. Rotate to where the maxillary teeth are on the top. Let's bring the highlights down again. And let's crop this bad boy. Lateral in the center. You see how there's like a slight cant to this photo? What I want to do is I want to correct that a little bit too. So I want to straighten it up kind of like that. too much right there let's bring that out and bam that looks good okay all right now we're getting ready to get into some mirror images so first we have the maxillary occlusal wow first thing i noticed about this one is it is overexposed so let's go ahead and drop the highlights here now one thing you have to be careful with and i've made this mistake so many times is forgetting that this is a mirror image. So first off, if you notice the photograph is like this, that would be inappropriate for a maxillary occlusal. Usually picture the patient in front of you and them opening wide. What would the arches look like in that case, right? So the maxillary would be like an upside down U and the mandibular arch would be a regular U shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this and make sure it's in the proper alignment, just as you see here. Now what we have to do, because this is a mirror image, we have to flip it. So we get the, the mirror uh, flipped. So we're actually seeing what's the actual orientation. Because right here, when you look at this, you think this is tooth number three, but because the image has not been flipped yet, in reality, that's not number three. That's actually number 14. This is number three. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to photo and we're going to flip horizontal. So what it's going to do is it's going to flip the image like that. Now we have the proper orientation. So this is number three. This is number 14. And you can tell that this patient doesn't have a lot of restorations or anything. Sometimes it's super helpful to have some models if you have the models of the patient nearby or if you have the charting of the patient nearby that you can refer to the charting if you need to, if you lose your orientation here. Um, I've seen it happen numerous times, especially with my own residents. Um, they'll take photos of their patients, they'll flip, uh, forget to flip those photos and then they'll do a presentation and they'll have some photos that are correct and some photos that are reversed and it gets really confusing. So make sure you flip your photos. And truthfully on these kind of photos, if you're shooting a mirror photo, as soon as you start to edit it, I would make sure one, it's in the proper orientation and two, you flip it first thing. Otherwise you may forget as you start messing with cropping and exposure. So I dropped the highlights a little bit. It's still a little bit blown out up here. So I'm going to drop the exposure just a tad as well. All right, next we're going to crop this in. 
And you can see that my mirror placement was a little bit close to these teeth. So you see the edge of the mirror. We can see if we can get that out. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. I'm gonna crop in a little bit and I'm gonna reposition. And so what I like to uh, do is use the distal of the terminal teeth, in this case, the second molars, to kind of make sure my orientation is correct. So if I crop in real close there, you can see that this tooth right here is touching the line, this one's not. So I'm gonna rotate this just a little bit to even that up on both sides. That looks good. And I want my midline to be the center vertically of this image. So I'm gonna move this over just a tad. And what I don't wanna do is I don't wanna uh, basically cut off any teeth and I don't want to um, get too close, okay? So we do have to cut out these teeth. These are the actual teeth we see directly in the image. They're not the reflection in the mirror. So you don't wanna keep those. So we can kind of crop in just a little bit more here on the back side, get a little closer to those second molars. And you can see when I did that rotation, uh, I can't really go any further forward because I'm, I'm tapping out up here on the top part of the image because it's rotated. So this is probably gonna be about as good as I can get this. And that actually looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and hit enter to lock that in. And there is our maxillary occlusal. All right, moving on to the mandibular occlusal. All right, so orientation here is first thing. You can see that it's an upside down U. That's not how we would visualize that if we were sitting directly in front of the patient. So we're gonna rotate that. And now that we have it in the proper orientation, we're gonna flip that horizontally because this is a mirror reflection. Now we have the teeth in the appropriate spot. So if you had this charted like this uh, number 19 buckle amalgam, uh, if you got confused at any point during this process of editing, you could refer to your charting and be like, oh, okay, there's an amalgam on the buckle of 19. So if you saw the amalgam over here on 30, you know your image is not flipped. All right, so that looks good. Let's drop the highlights. Bam. And let's crop this. So I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to use the distal of the second molars to kind of line me up. That looks pretty good. I'm going to center the midline in the front. If I really wanted to, I can bring this in a little bit more here. And that looks good. Lock that in. Bam, we're done. All right, next is the buckle images. We're gonna rotate this so the maxillary teeth are on the top of our image. This is a mirror image, so we're gonna flip this. Because look right now, it looks like we're staring at the right side of the mouth, but in reality, this is a reflected image of the left side. So let's flip this horizontal. Now we're looking at the correct orientation. Again, there's our buccal amalgam, right? Number 19, so that looks right. All right, next we're going to drop the highlights a little bit. Too much. This is usually a darker image because you're shooting in the back of the mouth, and so there's typically less light back here after you take the photo. So you may not have to take the highlights down as much. We're gonna crop this. We're gonna go way in. Okay, so I want you to think about when you were in dental school and you were learning how to do radiographs. And you talked about what needs to be in your molar shot, your molar bite wing, and your premolar bite wing. You usually have a little bit of distal of the canine in the premolar shot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this in here real tight. All right, and we're gonna bring it up here and we're gonna center our molars with the occlusal plane here on the horizontal line and I have a canine here I have a canine here if I want I could bring this in just a little bit more like that but that is where I want to be we're really cropping in tight on this and if our occlusal plane was off we could we could correct that by doing the rotation here as well but that looks pretty good so let's hit enter bam that looks good that looks real good so we brought that in a lot, a lot. All right. 
One thing I noticed though, something up with this. You see the aspect ratio on these looks different. See how this is more square? Yeah, so let's, oops. If this happens, you just go up here and hit fit. Let's go back to crop. I don't like this for some reason. Original. I think the aspect ratio got messed with somehow. I don't know what I did. That looks pretty good. Bam. That looks better. It was square a minute ago. Now it looks more rectangular. So be careful. Be real careful when you're doing these. Okay, next we're going to do the opposite side. We're going to rotate this to where the maxillary teeth are on top. We're going to flip this so we don't forget. We're going to crop. Bring this in real tight. Ah, you see what's happening here? For some reason, it's going to custom on me. So I gotta make sure that's set to original. And then it maintains the aspect ratio. Let me show you the difference here. So if I switch this to custom, you see how I can make you know, like different sizes, like, um, I don't know. This thing's being weird, honestly. Let's go back to original. A minute ago, it was allowing me to like make it not as tall and I can adjust the width separately. You wanna make sure as you adjust the width and the height that it maintains that appropriate ratio. So I don't know why it's doing this. I've never had this issue on my other computer, but for some reason it's giving me a little bit of a hard time here. So I'm just making sure that as I bring this down, it's not getting too thin vertically or too thin horizontally. All right, let me keep bringing that in. You can see we really crop in on these. That's not bad. I can, I can go a little bit tighter if I wanted to. Like that. Make sure the occlusal plane's in the center here. Bam. Done. All right. Next, we're getting into our maxillary shots. All right, so for this image, this is the maxillary arch, so we're gonna rotate this to where the maxillary teeth are in their proper orientation on the top. And we're gonna flip this, because this is a mirror image, so we're gonna flip horizontal. And honestly, the exposure looks pretty good, so let's go ahead and crop this thing. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna grab this. Ah, see, it's doing it again. Look, you see how I can make this really narrow like that and like this? That's not what I want. That is not maintaining the aspect ratio. And I notice right here it's set to custom. So let's change this back to original. And now when I bring this down, I can't make it too thin or, or too narrow. It's, it's maintaining that aspect ratio, and that's what we want. If you don't pay attention to that, then some of your images are going to be like, weird shape after you save them and some are going to be normal so you want them all to be the same another thing you can do or another thing i would recommend is if you don't want to do what i'm doing here and just keeping the original and cropping that down use the four by six option that tends to be a pretty good alternative option all right so anyway I don't know why it does it on some of these and others it doesn't. So we're going to deal with it. All right, so one thing you're going to notice here with this image, you see how the occlusal plane is going up a little bit? I want to level that out. So we're going to grab this and we're going to level this just like so. Okay? Now that it's level, it actually took some of these teeth that we see in the image out of the frame. But let's go ahead and get this little bit of tooth display right here out. So I'm gonna bring that down a little, just like that. And in a perfect world, I would bring this to where the teeth were like that, okay? But we're starting to see the teeth up here at the top of our frame, so I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split the difference. So I'm gonna take it up to where those teeth are out of the frame. 
and I can actually bring this in a little bit. I don't need all these anterior teeth in this shot, so I can bring it in to where we just get a little bit of the canine. Now look, I got a ton of room up here. I can bring this up to where we got a lot more of the hard palate up here and less of all this buccal mucosa. Right there, I start to get tooth show through again, so I don't want that. So right about there is gonna be good. Don't cut off the distal of your molar by accident. And that looks pretty good. That's awesome. And you can see how we took an image that looks like it's not so great when we started and we made it look nice through this cropping process. All right, let's do the opposite side. We're gonna rotate this again, maxillary arch. We're gonna flip it. Exposure's okay, let's crop. Let's see. Let's check the occlusal plane first. I'm gonna level that just a little bit. Now let's crop in. Ah, oh, it's doing it again. Okay, let me reset this. Okay, there we go. Man, this thing's being difficult. Only because I'm recording. If I wasn't recording a tutorial, this would work perfect. That's how it goes. All right, let's bring this in some more. Get the distal of the tooth. Got some of the canine. Don't want to get that tooth up here showing in our frame. So let's bring it out a little. Bam. That looks good. Actually, I may have I may have rotated it too much. I'm gonna be a perfectionist here. I'll probably rotate it back this way just a little bit. That looks better. Um, yeah, you got some retractor here. You can't get rid of that. If you're using metal retractors, you're gonna see that. Um, it's really difficult and truthfully it doesn't really bother me but clear retractor would would help with that all right let's do the lower same stuff let's rotate this now we're doing the mandibular arch so now the teeth are going to be on the bottom we're going to flip this horizontally because it is shot through a mirror ah what is that what is that right there you see that that is a scratch on the mirror. Uh, so there's not much I can do about that. I mean, you could, if you really wanted to, you could fix that. Super easy. Like you can go up here to this tool. And you could go to heal. And basically, you just make the size of this thing. big enough to cover the blemish and it just picks a spot from a different tooth <laughs> man it's fixed i don't really want to recommend you do that often uh, truth be told i think that gets in the realm of kind of doctoring the images up and now you're making something look better than it really was uh, really the photograph should be in its original form so I did that just to show you, you can do that if you really want to. That's not as big of a deal as like, you know, trying to make a filling you did or a crown you did look better or something like that. So that is an option. All right, exposure's not too bad. We did everything as far as flipping. Let's go ahead and crop this. Occlusal plane, let's fix that. We're gonna rotate this just like so. Making that a straight line. We don't want it to look canted. All right, please work. Nope, it's starting to do it. Let's go to original. All right, bring this in real tight. I'm trying to get this lip out of the way here. Next image. Let's rotate it. Good. Let's flip it. And let's crop it. We're going to fix the occlusal plane. We're going to level it out. 
This thing's being crazy, so I'm gonna go ahead and select original. It did it again. Man, this thing does not like me today. This never happens on my other computer, never. Now look, I'm starting to get some of this tooth here. I don't want that. So we're gonna have to figure this out. We're gonna have to figure out a way to get that out of there. I think we're gonna have to do a compromise, kind of like this. I can maybe, ah, see if I try to get some of the canine and bring this back in, let's bring it up a little. I'm cutting off some of the molar here too. So let's make this a little bit bigger. That's probably gonna be as good as I get. Not great, but you can make it work, right? You can take an image that's not ideal and you can make it look pretty decent. So that looks okay. All right, so that was the last of our mirror images. Next, we have the black contraster. Uh, this is the maxillary arch, so we're gonna flip this. This is not a mirror image, so we don't need to flip horizontally. We just need to get the orientation correct. And now that we have that, I'm gonna bring the highlights down just a smidge. Whoa, too much. Okay. And now we're gonna crop this. Keeps giving me issues. All right, there we go. And I don't love this image, and I'll tell you why. Is this retractor right here is not pulled up high enough. And that's my own fault. So good rule of thumb is when you have the patient retract for this, have them pull out and up. So they're gonna be pulling like this and not really get that lip out of the way. Again, metal retractor. We have a lot of these in our clinic and I use them because we have them. We really don't have any of the clear ones. We have a couple, but these are just in an extreme abundance. So I use these a lot. So there are limitations to these. I think the clear plastic retractors would work a lot better here. But that's gonna be as probably good as I can get. I'm gonna crop in a little bit more. Usually I like to keep a little bit of the premolars, at least the first or second premolar in the image. Center the midline. That looks okay. I don't love this. All right, next is the lower. We already got good orientation here because I shot this kind of at the patient's like seven o'clock position. So I wasn't at their head for this one. And exposure, let's take the highlights down a little too much, too much. Okay, and we're gonna crop this. It's canted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this a little like so. And we're gonna bring this in a little tighter. And there it goes doing that thing again. My aspect ratio is all over the place, so I fixed that. Now we're good. I hope you guys can see what I'm talking about when I say that. Because that's super annoying. I don't know why it's doing this. That looks pretty good. I like that. All right. And that's good. All right, so that was the last image that we needed to edit. Again, these images are not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but hopefully you can see that the editing process does allow you to make them look better. And that's how I like to shoot. Um, I've, I've seen people who've taught photography classes that they're really big on getting like that perfect cropped image directly right there when they're taking photos and that's super hard to do that's it's extremely difficult to do you know um years of practice you can do that but i find with my practice i don't like to spend a ton of time taking photos i like to devote maybe about 10 minutes to this and i like to just get it done and i take images that i know i can edit the more of these you edit the more you realize when you take the photo and you're looking at it chair side, you can be like, okay, I can, I can work with this. You know, I can make this work. And so those are the kind of photos I like to take in my practice. But you could spend extra time there perfecting the shot and try to get it as good as you can 
with the patient in the chair. And there's nothing wrong with that approach, but keep in mind, you take the same image 10 different times, the patient's probably gonna hate you, right? They're gonna hate you sitting there trying to make this image look perfect. So I'm all about getting it done and getting what I need and, and fixing it here. And I've went a little bit slower through this editing process, but I could go through these same photos and edit these in probably about 10 minutes or less. So if you take into consideration, you know, 10 minutes to take the photos, 10 minutes to edit, that's 20 minutes to get a photo series that I can use for other things, which we'll talk about in future videos. I'll show you how I use some of these images and what I do with those. But once I have the images edited, what I'll do is I'll go through and I will select all the images that I have rated. And for this on the Apple, I'm just holding down the command button and it allows me to select multiple images at one time. So I'm gonna go through and select all of these. You could alternatively go through and delete all the images you did not rate and then you're only left with the rated ones, but I'll do this sometimes. All right, I have all the images selected. I'm gonna go up here to File. I'm gonna to go to Export. And I'm gonna put these in a folder and I'm just gonna put them on a desktop. So I'm gonna label this. Uh, we'll just call it Photos of Patient. Um, normally what I do is I label it with the patient's last name or last name and last four, you know, something like that. However you want to organize these is entirely up to you. And then I will hit export. All right, and they're on my desktop. So now we have those photos in a folder. They're saved as JPEG images, so all the raw uh, photos I've taken, I've edited, I have now converted those to JPEGs. And if I ever need to go back and re-edit any of these, I just go back to the original raw image in Lightroom and edit. And that's how you do it. That's how I edit photos. Now that they're in a folder, I can put those anywhere I like. Uh, personally, what I like to do is I like to create a little keynote of the patient um, that has the photo series on a slide and I just drag and drop those photos into the existing template and that allows me to keep the photos organized. And usually that whole uh, keynote or PowerPoint presentation is kind of like the patient file for me. And that's where I store all their information as far as treatment planning stuff. Um, that's just how I do it. but. You can do with these however you like, uh, whatever you'd like to do with these, the sky's the limit. So I uh, hope you learned something from this video. I hope this was helpful. If you have specific questions, let me know in the comments down below. If I can ever help you by editing on a different software, uh, I can try to do that. Sometimes screen recording is a little tricky on certain computers and with certain softwares, but we can give it a go and I'll, I'll see if I can make that happen if it's something you think would be beneficial. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for signing up for this and uh, taking these courses with me. Um, it's a pleasure to help you learn and I hope you get a lot out of it. I'll see you next time.